following video has been rated I for inappropriate giggling because I'm going to be a giggly bitch. Um, but in actual... Also, I for important. I for important. Because this shit is real. Yeah. Um, Realist shit so, out um, there. <laughs> sorry. Because I never grew I'm up. incredibly so, I'm sorry. Okay. So, I'm um, but seriously, if, <laughs> if easily offended by human nature and biology, then just skip or watch. We really don't care. What's up? So it's me, Charlotte, Tori, Aaron, and Real Kit Kitty. Um, Real Kit Kitty is off to the side doing something. So today, um, as you saw by a message, we are talking about um, sex ed. Uh, so we all have, I assume we've all gone to a public school in the United States. Yeah, yeah. sadly. <laughs> and um, unfortunately, as, as we all know, <laughs> as we all know, um, we've had a really American sex ed is one of the worst sex ed uh, anyone could receive because A, they uh, teach nothing but abstinence and B, uh, for, the, for our state there's a set of things we can't talk about which is homosexuality, Planned Parenthood, uh, being transgender, uh -huh. yeah, LGBTQ uh, community, basically anything that might stir up controversy among parents because we live in the South and the South we and live in the South. Anyway, so no, this is technically the South. We live in the South where um, it's more or less people believe that it's abstinence and as well as... Um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> as well, room for Jesus. Jesus is within all of us. So Christian like side hug. <laughs> Sorry. Well, in this, as well as um, that it's something that should only be taught at home. So... Yeah. We're gonna like give you kind of a little bit, and I'll be trying to uh, show this. I'll be trying to edit any pictures in between, so there'll be a pause, a picture, and then the video. So let's get started. So, um, abstinence. I it's think shitty. it's okay if that's something you personally want to do. Like, yeah. I will respect yeah. people's wishes if they personally want to wait. That's fine. But mm -hmm. I feel like with the way that we are teaching it in public schools in this country is that it is the only thing, and it's like you remember that scene in Mean Girls? You have sex or you die. Like I'm that's what we're that. teaching. You will have sex. If you have sex, you will get, get pregnant, pregnant and, and die. die. Yeah, pretty much. I actually have like, oh. um, a video right over here. It's the Purity Myth. Uh, it's a trailer for the Purity Myth, which was done by the Media Foundation. Or Media Education Foundation, and I can link it to you later. And we'll have a link down below for any videos we're referencing. For instance, I will be referencing uh, the John Oliver video about sex education in America because it is very well informative when they do a video and stuff. But uh, with abstinence, I even wrote something down because that's how organized I am when it comes to our videos. Oh yeah, we're super organized today. I'm gonna yeah. go ahead and open the group chat so I can send you. I don't fucking care. Anyway. So I can send you things. Would you like to read your piece? So, um, sorry. I'm just letting the dude pass through. Yeah, this is gonna be weird. We are filming in a public place. Oh, no, okay, Kitty okay, just said something. All right, so while abstinence is a perfectly fine choice, the way public schools teach it have left students like myself ill-informed Ill, Ill about sex in general. Um, and I was forced to take the abstinence pledge or else I would have failed health and stuff because that's just how they teach it. So, public, the public sex education, public school sex education is basically a joke, I'd say. Yeah. Like, it's not only a joke, it's, it's a bad joke. real. And it reinforces bad, bad values and bad ideas. And, and there's so much that people for, know they can get away with because okay. it's not taught about. And, and once, and once I decided that, um, hey, I'm not actually going to follow through with this abstinence thing, which is a personal choice. It's a personal choice. Um, it's an incredibly personal choice. I was, I'm still a virgin and stuff, but I was afraid of everything. They taught, they taught us that everything can get you pregnant. And if you have sex once, you will get the worst diseases possible. Yeah, and they showed the worst. physically degenerate. Yeah, they showed the worst diseases. They, mm -hmm. And, like, I can understand HPV is one of the most easily con contracted contractable uh, disease is known. I had HPV. Yeah. But it's, as long as you're using protection, which they really didn't teach you, then you're good. And um, they, they teach you to wear a condom, but they don't teach you how to fit for a condom, which is yeah. also a big problem. 
you know, we're gonna get into that later, but you know, they won't teach enough about protection and all the available protection there is out there. I was, I will say I was lucky enough at a very young age, my mom told me about what sex was. And as she went through nursing school, she started telling me stuff and I'm like, okay. And she kept me very well informed. And I can say this as a daughter of someone who's in the medical profession, even as someone who has a sister in the medical profession, you're, you can be lucky enough to like know this stuff, but there are parents who are just like, I don't feel comfortable teaching this, so I'm not going to teach it. Right. Which and is they bullshit. It, they expect it to be taught in sex ed, but it really isn't. I got a better, more comprehensive version of sex ed by my parents when I was eight years old than what yeah. I got in high school. Yeah. I didn't see a real healthy penis until I started hanging out on the internet. <laughs> this is a true statement. Yeah. Not even going to lie. Yeah, and so, the internet the Avenue Q is song is true. Well, I know. It's for but should we segue to the... No, let's not go there yet. Let's not um, go there yet. I just was giving a so, insight. Um, like I said before, it's a perfectly fine choice to have. Right. Like, if you're like, hey, I'm going to be absent. My faith says I should, and I'm a good follower of my faith, or I follow the abstinence pledge, I'm gonna be abstinence. But like, it's really the only thing they teach you, especially yeah. in our state, it was like heavily pushed and like you were bullied basically, you were, I've seen, I saw girls bullied into signing it by other girls and stuff. Right. Well, not oh, only yeah. that, but when I, I was in high school, they forced us almost to memorize the effects of different diseases and the names of different diseases, but we did not learn a whole lot about things like feminine protection for like dental dams or things like that. We're gonna break control. make one of those today. It's, it, I know more about the diseases than I do probably about protection. And I, it's just one of those things. And like, like HPV, 80% of people or something like stupid like it's that. It's like 90%. Yeah. Okay. And it's not even sometimes a sexual thing. Yeah, a lot we of found people out have that type one of it where it's like, it's skin to skin contact. Mm -hmm. Well, one of my friends just found out she has it, and she has it on the inner of her thigh. Yeah, and you can get it anywhere. anywhere. HPV. Oh, HPV. Yeah, yeah, and it's just when somebody is with, touches the inner of her thigh, skin to skin contact. Yeah, like yeah. It, if you, I'm pretty sure it's like if you've had a wart before, you have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you like, get cold sores, you have a certain strain of HPV. Mm -hmm. It's not the kind that can kill you, but it is a strain of HPV, and you should probably, it's not genital HPV, but you should let your partners know. I have the HPV that causes cold sores. So when I have cold sores, I can't be kissing on people, but when I don't, it's fine. Going back to the sex ed thing, um, so last night, Phil Kitty and I were uh, messaging on our group chat between uh, <laughs> her and her and me, and um, she was asking me if we're going to just rant or if we're gonna do lists. I'm like, I've been typing out my bitch list since I was in sex ed. Well, but seriously, I found my angst filled with journals. It's like reading your notes from a movie her, because Kat hates the movie her. I started to pull that notebook out and, and like the other stuff that I that we apparently need to read off. We're just gonna have a day where we just do voiceovers of like notes we've taken that got oh so gosh. ranty. Yes. Um, I, I have. I have so much notes and stuff from the sex ed class that I had to take, but I didn't bring any of them because I am not that smart. But <laughs> we don't need that. We don't no. need those notes. God, you know those how many notes like... I took during sex ed at any point? We were required to. I was gonna say zero. We if I have any, then they're, they got shredded because they were useless. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so next bullet point: contraception. Okay. Our favorite. Uh, currently in the U.S., anyone can purchase condoms or in the morning after pill uh, at any age. I think within a reasonable age. I think it's like 16 year olds. Yes. Well, I've also had like 15 year olds buy and not get in trouble for. Yes. But like, because we've realized teen pregnancy is going to happen and stuff, so it's readily available. <gasps> and birth control is currently affordable for women. Teenagers mm -hmm. have been having sex since the dawn of time. Yeah. Oh yeah. People just need to learn it. So. And I will say certain things with contraception that you need to know that I did not know and had to discover it the hard way. Uh, certain loops or latexes can be irritable. That is yeah. just something yeah, we'll, that we'll had to learn. We will definitely get into that. Um, because, I mean, don't get me wrong, but you need, when buying contraception, I mean, A, personally, let me, let me go down my mental list. A, I think that it should be very easily attainable. Like, yeah. Just go to the store and be like, yeah, Thanks to the Affordable Care Act, 
contraception is now readily available at a very reasonable price. Mm -hmm. yeah. It used to be like a bajillion dollars. Yeah, it used to be so ridiculous to get. The post I most recently linked to, go ahead and open that and click through the pictures a couple times. There's a slide specifically for birth control. So you can see um, what I'm looking at. Yeah. So are we going to talk about birth control or are we going to talk about... Uh, I was we're just about to segue into birth control, actually. All right. Um, so as someone who... Uh, as someone who does uh, sex work, I do amateur porn and cam girling um, and camming. <laughs> you, you gotta have birth control. Mm -hmm. I have an implant in my arm. It's medical grade silicone. It's called the next one on implant. You Is it the one that you can move? Yes, it's the <laughs> one I can move. Tori loves it. Tori loves to play with it. You want me to take? You want me to take sleep with it? You want to play with it? It's oh. weird because you can see it yeah, you in can. her skin. And she moves it. Oh, yeah. It's so weird. My friend got one. It's so uncomfortable. Do you want to touch it? It's so weird. It's so weird. You can feel it right here. Yeah, it's just under the skin. It's uh, just very, very shallow. Um, it lasts Strange. for three years, and it's super great because I don't menstruate anymore, so I don't have to worry about menstruating fucking up my work schedule. And I will say, though, also, you had uh, some problems yeah. with uh, menstruation. Birth and control is not just for preventing pregnancy. It's a lot of times used to treat endometriosis, PCOS, cervical cancer, and ovarian cancer symptoms. Oh yeah, birth control can, it's very versatile and uh, you have to be very careful taking it because yeah. There's a, there's a couple different kinds. There's progesterone birth control. Yeah. There is estrogen birth control. You have to there's know. this birth control? <laughs> <laughs> you, you have to know what pill works for you. You really should get your hormone levels tested before you start a birth control. You know, go in and say, I want a sex hormone panel done so we can look at what I need as far as birth control goes. You can get the pill. You can get the shot. You can even get an IUD, but they don't really recommend that for people who have not given birth because the cervix will not be able to dilate enough to get it through without hurting like a motherfucker. Thank you for posting this, Kat. This is really cool. Um, I will say that uh, I, I didn't several know times this. Open. <laughs> I didn't know this until I went back to my doctor and then I came in one of these times to record before recording and was like, I had to switch um, birth control because they counteract or my antidepressants fuck it up somehow. Mm -hmm. And it's it, the chemical imbalance. Yeah, it it's somehow fucks it all up. And I was like, I did not know that antidepressants could mess it all up. Yeah, you actually, you when you get birth control, don't just see a gynecologist. See a doctor or see a pharmacologist whose specialty mm -hmm. is in medications. They can see if your medications are going to have an interaction because if you're taking birth control, you want it to be effective, but you also want it to not interact with other medications because if it's having an interaction, it can actually fail more than likely. Yeah. yeah right now, I'm currently in the process of, uh, by myself, because I haven't brought up the topic with my parents yet, I'm currently looking, comparing to see which birth controls go with the antidepressants because I myself am on a very low tier antidepressant. Same. So I just want to like figure out before it's like, oh, we're, you're going to get pregnant if you take this and um, this. Yeah. Again, like I said, you would probably yes. want to see a pharmacologist as well as a gynecologist. Yes. Um, as far as other forms of contraception go, you know, you have your condoms, you your, have your lady your, condoms. It, well, I call them internal and external yeah. condoms. I, I'm, um, I'm a, I never grew up. Yeah, so. you have the ring, you condoms. have the sponge, you have, which I don't recommend the sponge. Um, but also, you know, other than having something to put on a dick, you need to have something to cover your mouth. Like I said, I have the kind of HPV, HPV you get with cold sores. So if I were to put my mouth on someone while I had a cold sore, they would contract that type of HPV. May I see a condom, please? We brought condoms today. Yes, we did. And we have to do this somewhat so discreetly. So I bought three different kinds. Take your pick. Hey, I had that back. So the thing about condoms. I can't use those, so I was like, hey, get rid of them. The thing about condoms is they come in sizes, and a lot of people don't know this. Sure. And the thing about, sorry, the thing about condoms is, I have my hands up. Yeah, there the thing go. about condoms is a lot of people, a lot of, you know, BMAP, cis, cis, yeah, go ahead. a lot of cis guys, cisgender guys are like, well, I don't want it to be a small, but I'm like the average, but like the average dick is only about five to six inches long. Mm -hmm. I yeah. can't read. Um, 
a lot of condoms that are like flavored or have like sensation causing lubricants are actually really bad to use vaginally or anally. Really? They can cause burning. Uh, the ones with flavoring have glycerin and glycol in them, which will cause yeast infections. Me and a friend. Um, flavored condoms are specifically for oral. Like, they are specifically yeah, for oral. They're, they're yeah. only use them for oral. Don't try it with anything else. I can speak from first so, hand that it hurts. Oh, well, that's why I said I can't use these because it hurts me and it hurts my partner. So we had to switch to a nicer brand. So these are ribs. <laughs> yeah. Well, some of them are ribs. That's ultra ribbed. Yeah, I don't know. One of them's not. Other side. So this is your twisted. average condom. It has a little thing at the top. You squeeze that when you're so putting it on. So much, it's a really plastic. Sorry. Well, they are latex. Yeah. There's other kinds of condoms. They are made of sheepskin or nitrile. That is, if you're allergic to latex. My partner is allergic to latex. My partner is and myself are both allergic so, to latex. Isn't there a good rule of thumb, like if you're allergic to pineapple, you're allergic to latex yeah. most of the time? So the thing about making a dental dam, and I'm hoping you can see this, the first thing you're going to want to do... It smells like a doctor's office. You know what I could do? I could film this with my phone. Yeah. And then... Yeah. All right. So, so, I'm fine. I'm just trying to make a hole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the only time it. you would purposely make a hole in a condom. These things are stronger than you think they are. So, you need a good knife. You take off the end. Let's just put lube all over the fucking table. Yeah, whatever. And then, you're going to make a little rip. And then... Do not use this for sex afterwards. Yeah, please don't use this for sex afterwards. <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs> Or else you will get pregnant or die. <laughs> Don't die. No, first you'll get pregnant, then you'll die. <laughs> He'll die giving childbirth because it's obviously the 15th century. Yeah. You know, you're gonna you're gonna want to edit this small video. Just saying. Yeah. That's fine. I can. I'm slow, and I'm also using a knife because I didn't think to bring scissors today. I had scissors in my car if you had needed them. Fucking, I told you I was going to do this. I thought you brought scissors, okay? Why would I bring scissors? Because <laughs> you were going to do this. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Just easy super easy logic. Easy, easy logic. By the way, I'll put some things that, uh, two or three speeds that way. Do you want to edit? You can edit this part. Yeah. And then Tori will have been an editor. Smiling. <laughs> Fucking over there that. Yeah, go ahead. I have a, uh, the hard life of being a hoe. And it's basically tips about how to take care of yourself, but it's done in I'm totally a hoe and I love it fashion. So and you're gonna get to you're gonna get a rectangle like this. So can I can you put your hand like this for me? So imagine this is the vaginal opening going this way. Yes, it's gonna touch your hand. <laughs> you replace it like that. <laughs> That's how. <laughs> I don't like cut. I don't like touching cut. Like that. <laughs> That's how. squeamish over there. Or something. I don't like cut. I don't like touching condoms. I've never had. That's how condoms work. Oh, yeah. If it helps, I've never touched any either. So. Do you want to touch it? Would you like? No, to? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. Oh. Would you like to? So, um, I can just imagine your face if we just tossed that. Right. Back up and I don't have the energy to react <laughs> more than this today. If I throw you the condom in the package, will you put it in the trash can? Sure. Please, please don't fall out. Please don't fall out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's nothing thinking beautiful. <laughs> People are probably looking in and thinking, why the hell are they throwing it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to unclip real quick. All right. So, um, as the mic falls. So, um, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> See. So the morning after pill is has been a godsend. Yes. Um, yeah, it's definitely yeah, prevented quite a few of my friends from being knocked up. I will say. You probably want those back. <laughs> well, I bought. I, know, I thought we would be destroying more condoms yeah. for some reason. I brought three. I couldn't. <laughs> well, I, can't can't use I, could. <laughs> I actually watched a video. We'll do have the stand lounge. <laughs> I actually mm -hmm. watched a video of the terrible women people. testing. The strength of condoms because people are like, well, I don't want it to break. My hand smells like they were able like to put it sex. over a basketball. Generally, yeah. a condoms, keyboard, yeah, a condoms toaster are, can take a lot. They can, but like I said, you need to make sure that's the right size. Your enemy isn't size; it's friction. 
And you don't want girls to be doing this number to get it out. <laughs> Trust me, size yourself, please. Size yourself. This number. Don't be ashamed. You're probably smaller than you think. <laughs> Listen, buy, buy, buy the small, buy the smallest package. Not the small size, but the smallest package of whatever size you think you are. Try it on. If it doesn't fit, go up or down as needed. This was a trial package. And, yeah. and I, it's good because I tried them, learned that I was allergic to certain things, and moved on. I went and Are you allergic to latex? Allergic to the lube that they coat them in. Ah. Uh, so I have, and then my partner. It probably has parabens in it, that's why. And my partner's allergic to latex, so now we have to go get the oh. nicer condoms, so. Oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. speaking of lube, what Aaron is now using is it's not, not lube. lube. This is lotion, children. It's I brought this. Can I use some of your lotion? Yeah, go ahead. I brought this specifically as the example of not lube, but we'll get into lubes. Um, we, I, well, we've technically gotten over contraception, so we will talk about lube, I guess, now. So lube is something you use for uh, sex to make it easier, to make things slippery, to make it easier to insert things. Sex so, shouldn't hurt. Like, even if it's your first time. You so. do not have to bleed for the sex to be... If you bleed, good. you've done it wrong. Yes. It doesn't matter what... Web mm -hmm. up. If it hurts, you've done it wrong. Sorry, I have so many... Yeah. Good, good lube. lube. <laughs> the thing about lube is you should always check your ingredients. It should be paraben-free, glycol-free, glycerin-free, and it should be water-based. Do not use hemp oil-based. That is a myth. Don't do it. Unless you're using it for anal. For anal, you can use the silicone or hemp-based lube because you need something that's not going to dry as fast for anal. You can, in a pinch, use something like, and I've seen people do this, use uh, Vaseline or, God forbid, Crisco, but don't, please, for the love of God, don't use Crisco. Oh, God. That does not belong in your butt. <laughs> There's a whole movie scene. You know, for like $1,500, you can buy like 55-gallon drum of lube. <laughs> I remember going You're banned from this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the right size. Also, I know how I felt blank Gordon. Charlie. Do not underestimate the power of foreplay. Yeah. It can take 20 minutes for someone with a vagina to be fully aroused and ready for penetrative sex. Also, if you do anal, shit happens. Yes. Quite literally. Yes. One, yes. clean yourself. Two, Make sure it's, you know, you haven't pooped for about three hours and you're probably good. Use condoms. Go slow. Also, don't eat within, I think it's like about an hour yeah. before. So yeah. Maybe because that will start your digestive tract to move. And it'll and move even, everything down. Yeah. And listen, you, yeah. shit happens when, when anal happens, but. You don't want your shit getting pushed in your <laughs> That's why you use condoms, children. The yeah. anus is disgusting. Yes. All right, I'm going to deviate once again for a second because this is just hilarious. I like how I'm the one on task this time. I know, but it says the ultimate lube keg. <laughs> Sorry. You're banned from this podcast. <laughs> Charlie, you need oh, to just close that tab. She's on the Amazon website. <laughs> close the tab. <laughs> That's okay, one of the tabs I have open, and these are all Tumblr posts. All right, all right. Some of you have, can I Do you need to, like, take a minute? Is we'll get some focus, like, I promise. What? Cat? Oh, I said one of the posts that I have open so I shouldn't be judging is can we fuck this rock? I'm trying to, I'm trying to, it's oh. malachite stalactite. Oh, is that about the, the, the really shiny thing that you're not supposed to touch because it's like, oh. no, it's, it's like radioactive or something. It's beautiful looking. Yeah, don't touch it. It's radioactive. <laughs> well, one of the Actually, it's perfectly safe. You just don't want to put it in certain places. Moisture will cause it to leach toxic stuff. Yeah. Which is why you don't put it in your Remember, children. Well, you don't put it in your vagina because it's porous, and it's gonna cause bacterial infections. And Speaking stuff. of porous things, that's a beautiful segue into toys. Hey. Yeah. Um, your toys should be silicone. Yes. They should be paraben yeah. free. Make sure the lube matches the toy because you can, in fact, destroy your toys. If you yes. use silicone lube with silicone toys, you will melt your toy. That that's just a big mess because you don't want to have to clean yeah. that out. Toys made of stainless steel glass, silicone, and certain types of acrylic are perfectly body safe. And, you know, don't ever buy anything at Spencer's. God help you. Don't ever buy anything at Spencer's. None of their toys are body safe. Mm -hmm. You will get a yeast infection. I wish I didn't know. 
But you will. Well, it wasn't an insertion. It wasn't an insertion toy. Yeah, but, but if you put, if it's something, you, just don't buy toys from Spencer's. If you really want a good toy, go to SheVibe.com. They're great. Spencer's is that place you go to get gag gifts. Mm -hmm. so that's yeah. where you go to get terrible gifts for your straight friend's bachelorette party. Yes. Yeah, it's it's really. You know, I went in there, and the only thing that I've ever bought from there was like the flavored. It's massage oil, but it, you you know it's really good. And really, even that, it's not supposed like you're not supposed to do anything insertion wise. It's just. Like for I'm learning new things today. Yes. Yeah. Don't get me toys at Spencer's. Is jewelry. I thought it was ten years ago. Yeah, yeah. I bought a wallet that I used for years and years and years until it just destroyed itself. That I, was the Robin wallet. It was from Spencer's, and that was it. I bought condoms at Spencer's once. Another another thing about Spencer's, <laughs> if if you see that wall that has like the bondage stuff, none of that will hold. No. It's My, shitty. Even stuff. I knew that. So yeah, no, that is not a good yeah. place to get that. Um, which, jump in real quick. Fifty Shades is not real. I can recommend actual good smut and actual good porn. Just send somebody an email or something. Cat, yeah. say it with me. Fifty Shades is, is abuse. It is. It's a terrible representation of the BDSM community. As someone who's a part of it. I do I'm that for a living. Hi. Yeah, as someone who's definitely a part of that and knows a lot of people who are a part of that community. It's bullshit. All of us. Like, I, I went to a munch recently and it was How brought up. And, what? How did you like the munch? Sorry. It was I amazing. was the one who recommended this group to her. It was amazing. I should go. I met so many wonderful people. Oh my goodness. Anyways, on topic. It was brought up once in the meeting, and pretty much in unison, the whole room said it's terrible. In unison, pretty much the whole room said it was terrible, and the only people who didn't say it had not read it or watched it. Good. Well, and the only, it's not only abuse, but it's also a terrible misrepresentation of an actually very healthy community. Mm -hmm. That is a subtype of sexual activity and everything. It's one yeah. of the biggest genres you will be able to find in terms of sex that people enjoy. And mm -hmm. all of the sex in Fifty Shades is missionary. It's so gross. It just happens to be surrounded by torturing her also. Yeah, but that's not My sister, who is like the epitome of like a suburban white mom, sometimes is like, this book is tacky and terrible and it's romanticizing abuse. And I was just like, I love you, Rachel, you're the best sister ever. And people keep saying, and it still happens because they keep making movies for it. Well, if you look at pretty much any it's, literature in as chick lit, any of that stuff, a whole lot of it will, will per portray the same thing. So it's just this one got a lot of attention because it's specifically BDSM. Right. And that's because BDSM. it's still like... Soft, there were air quotes in there for people it's who can't see. Soft taboo, as I like to call it. I've seen like a million knockoffs of it, and it's great. And usually the knockoffs are probably more like bare just. Oh yeah. More of. I have actually thumbed through one. It had it had this. The the cover had like a um, a rhinest a picture of a rhinestone choker on it, and then it said in really swirly script the submissive, and I like thumbed through it. And I'm like, oh my god, this is actually a kind of good, not my deal, but holy shit, they use safe words. <laughs> I was like impressed. <laughs> and she, Wait, you lit up. <laughs> Wait, just, can you recommend that? Like, can, where, where did I get I, I, I found it at, no one laugh, BJ's Wholesale Club. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's what it is. So appropriately <laughs> named. <laughs> no, it's next to Checkers. I know which one you're talking about. No, I, I still can't get over that BJ's. This is totally, I, I went to a BJ's that was. I went to a Dick's that was next to a BJ's when I, I was in a. There used to be a hand, There used to be a Hancock fabric next to a Goodwood furniture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because the Hancock fabrics is now a church. It's actually my dad's church. <laughs> yeah. Um, I went to, this is totally off topic, I went to a funeral over the weekend at a Baptist church that was on Gay Avenue. Yes! <laughs> Alright, so moving on. Um, I'm staying fabulous even in death. <laughs> <laughs> I want that on my tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. I'll make sure it's throughout the path. Um, so uh, well, the next thing we kind of wanted to bitch. The next thing kind of like, and BDSM is kind of a leeway into it, is consent. Yeah. Because consent is key. Like, even if, like... 100%. Here's right. the easy way to sum this up. If it's consensual, it's sex. If it's not consensual, it's, it's rape. Rape. Um, rape is not non-consensual sex. And I've knew, and I knew no what con- I've, I've known what consent was since I was, like, 12, because I'm obsessed with SVU. Like, consent requires sobriety, consciousness, and not being coerced. Yeah. It has to be freely like, given. Like, if a girl you really like, or a dude, or whoever you like is just like, hey, I just had a couple little drinks, I'm a little bit tipsy. No, we're good, I'm just messing with stuff. Try not to let it hit the mic. Um, I'm tipsy and stuff, I want to sleep with you. Y- you should probably wait till they sober up. Yeah. You should be like, how about you have a few glasses of water and something to eat first? Like, why don't we do an example? Because we're all a bunch of theater nerds here, aren't we, Tori? Yes. <laughs> My job as an actress. Okay, girl. Hey, can I, can I, can I, can I get your number? Uh, uh, how drunk are you? <laughs> you drunk yourself? I'm, I have only had six shots. <laughs> of what? <laughs> uh, I'll give you my number. If you go home, I'll okay. call me tomorrow. Okay. Done. That's how you do it. But right. still. Yeah. You know, your partner should be sober. They should be conscious. They, sh- you are not forcing them. Saying, if you don't do this, I'll break up with you. If you don't do this, I'll tell everyone we did anyway. And that's being manipulative and yeah. like not cool. But um, with consent, um, if you're like getting hot and heavy and stuff, and like you had said yes before, and then all of a sudden you're like no, they have to stop. Or yeah. even if you are allowed, nothing to is your obligation. Mind. Yeah. Not even being married. Yeah. No. Another, another thing I I actually have gone through this. If you're in the middle of it, yeah. And in, in my situation, I had a class to go to, and I was like, "Hey, I have class. I have. We have to stop. I have to go." And he pushed me back down in the bed. Not no consent. And a perfect partner uh, will understand. Like yeah. I will say from personal experience, something like that has happened to me. Is, in the middle of it and I was like you know what I'm not feeling it right now this is not working for me we need to stop and also you know, he was a grace of God and said yeah. yes we will stop and we will do something else also super 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 important thing something super important yes if you can't laugh with the person you're having sex with while you're having sex you're not having sex with the right person let me tell you something about sex I have in fact discover. I have in fact farted in <laughs> In my fiance's face <laughs> while we were having sex, and God bless them, they laughed it off because it was a really squeaky fart, and they thought it was the funniest thing they'd ever heard. That's true romance. That was the first time I'd ever had sex either, and I like was mortified. I thought I was gonna die, and my fiance's just sitting there laughing like, <laughs> "So cute, I love you so much," and like kissing my back and telling me it was fine. Let me tell you something about sex that I had to discover also in a manner like that. It's an, it is embarrassing. I don't know why oh, yeah, sex I thought is super it was embarrassing. so embarrassing. It was embarrassing. It was just like noise was embarrassing. The sh- yeah. Yep, that's embarrassing. But if if you both like each other enough to start doing something like that, A, it shouldn't matter and it won't. And B, laugh it off. Farts happen, cleaves happen. That stupid ass noise happens. <laughs> you know, shit happens. Like, you'll make weird noises. Your tummy will rumble. You'll okay. accidentally elbow your partner weird. Oh, it's oh god. It happens. it happens. Um, story about that. <laughs> oh boy. Um, we weren't actually having sex, but we were like... Heavy petting? Eh, sure it's for us. <laughs> and, um... I was trying to get her to roll over because she was on her back and I was trying to get her to roll over on her stomach and she elbowed me in the face. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure and she, she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, it's okay. And I just like got back on top of her. So. It's not a big deal. Stuff will happen. It yeah. will be weird. It. Okay, the human body takes up space. Like, and the human body is disgusting. Oh, it's nasty. It like, Even listen, just normally, it's nasty. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter if you just showered. You're still gross, gross. probably. Yeah. I mean, it, if I you're like, so, so for example, <laughs> if you're like new to something like oral 
Pete and Bastard. you want and you want it to be like I guess a way of easing into it, it and you like, like you like want to take a shower beforehand. That helps. But sorry, I I, I was on Facebook. Okay. Before. Um, but like, do you want us to talk about menstruation while you're gone or? Well, I don't care. I'm just grabbing. Like grabbing taking things. a shower and before all ladies in here. So yeah, toss it at me when you're done. So, uh, we're all ladies. We're all we're going to go to our next topic. Oh, oh, I love you too. I, oh, I thought we were changing topics. Well, Not we've yet. We've already talked about consent. Yeah. Well, before we leave, before we leave the topic of consent, I do want to point out this is also tied to BDSM being an existing culture. Mm -hmm. There are kinks and fetishes that talk about and use non-consent if somebody use air quotes it's, yes. it's, it's dubious consent. consent. It's dubious consent, isn't it? Or non well, no. or consensual non-consent. And right. those things and there's are still safe words and there's still contracts mm -hmm. and you have to be very safe about that. Right. Oh, yeah. It's easy to so, cross from the no don't to no don't. Yeah. It's very easy to cross those yeah, A lot of that is tone of voice. Um, I can say from experience my uh, and you, you have to check in periodically. Like my girlfriend and I do that. And traffic light. There, there's that system. Yeah, as well. there's the traffic light um, system. But where <laughs> yellow is like slow down or like be careful. Red is stop. Green is I'm all right. We, yeah. We're good. We can keep going. Um, but so I noticed my girlfriend kind of slipped into that consensual non-consent thing, and I like stopped to make sure like is that what's happening or are you actually saying no? And she was like. Did I actually say stop? I was like, no. She said, did I say the safe word? No. And then you just kept going. Yeah. But if, if they're actually like, no, I want you to stop. Unless you know. you've like written it out beforehand or agreed upon it beforehand that that's part of the scene, don't continue. A lot of the times people will script these kinds of things so they know if something's off. Yeah. But, um. I just wanted to share that because yeah. I know there have been people. Mm -hmm. I that used to be a thing that I didn't know about. Yeah, but it was something I had wondered about. I yeah. have worked so. with some people who do kind of who do that kind of stuff before. Um, again, you these are things that are normally scripted out in order to make sure that both parties know if something is off. Because if it veers off script, you automatically know something's wrong. I need to stop immediately, especially if that person just can't get their head around saying their safe word for whatever reason. Yeah, if, if they start saying random words for no reason, chances are they're trying to remove a safe word. Especially if it sounds close and you're like, that's not a safe word, but that's close. Yeah. But um, also, just a reminder that consent isn't just about sex. It's about touching in general. Mm -hmm. Strangers do not have the right to your body no matter what. And even your friends and family don't have the right to your body. Bodily autonomy is very important. From a young age, I was always taught that people have to ask me before they are allowed to touch me. And so my sister is now teaching her kids that and teaching them that you have to ask before you touch people. I have fibromyalgia, it makes my body be in pain a lot. My niece and my nephew are both very careful about that and ask me, you know, Aunt Erin, are you too much, are you hurting too much today? Can I give you a hug or can I give you a big hug? And a big hug implies more force, which is why they ask. And if I tell them you can give me a big hug, you know, they understand, but if I tell them, I need a gentle hug today. They understand that too. Mm -hmm. And even if you're with like one of your best friends, you can tell them to yeah. stop touching you. There's no reason. Like, real Kit Kitty is like my best friend. And if I, if we were just like curled up and snug snuggling, because we do that sometimes when we watch movies, if I just suddenly wanted to stop being touched, I could tell real Kit Kitty, and she would stop immediately because she respects me and my body and my boundaries, mm -hmm. because that's what real friends do. And usually, you've told me a couple times to, to back off of it. What I'll do is I'll also sit up and I actually move away from you instead yeah, of just because sometimes I, it's either arms I arms. hurt or I'm overstimulated and I need to not be touched right now. Especially if I'm having bad anxiety, I don't want to be touched. Mm -hmm. But speaking of your body, yeah, it's very we're going to talk about the things that come out of your body now. So, so this is for people with vaginas. This is a pack. This is a tampon. This one goes inside your vagina. This one goes in your underwear. Both of these things are technically toxic for your body. So um, with periods, um, I want to say, because you and me both had uh, PCOS, 
Yeah. Have had. Uh, and one of the things is a sign is um, one of them is weight. Is uh, your body weight's a little bit heavier? Another one. Extremely one's bad periods. You're gonna have yeah. a ton of pain. You're gonna have an incredibly heavy flow, and you're gonna be <gasps> sorry, really irregular. Yeah. Um, personally, um, I'm gonna go into a story here. Um, personally, um, when I was in high school, I was like 14, and I still hadn't like really been getting my period. It only happened every like three months, so I was getting like four periods a year, and um, it got really, really bad. Like I could barely get out of bed, and I almost fit, and I almost got written up for gym class all the time because I could barely run and stuff. Because when you have PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome, your periods tend to also last a lot longer, and they can last up to ten reference. days. Yeah. And your back and the back pain is unbearable. If you have, um, if you get back pain, your cramps are unbearable. I've seen people throw up because of you it. can have cysts burst on your ovaries, and that's incredibly painful because now you're internally bleeding. I actually had a partner, um, and this also goes back to consent as well. During sex, um, he's a trans guy. During sex, his cyst popped because he had PCOS. So we just stopped immediately and he's like, that's the worst practice I'm sorry. Honestly, if you have uh, problems like that, um, it tastes dusty. No. <laughs> if you have problems, if you, if you are having regular that. periods and stuff like that, we recommend that you go to a doctor to, if you can afford it, or go to the nearest Planned Parenthood and get that checked out and try to get on something like metformin, which has been proven to help fix the problem. I actually went to my doctor, I have another appointment coming up. Um, I am what he called the pre PCOS because mine is the same way. I'm very irregular. I almost didn't go to work yesterday. I was vomiting all night. I, it was horrid. They were lucky enough to uh, catch it because I had such high levels of testosterone because uh, I also have other medical problems. But they figured out that this was also linked to PCOS because I go see an endocrinologist. Mm -hmm. so, I was, so I was lucky enough that they caught it before it got super bad. Unfortunately for me, I started showing symptoms of PCOS when I was about 14 years old. I wasn't diagnosed until I was 20, and they did an intravaginal ultrasound on me and found out that for several years now, I hadn't been properly shedding uterine lining, and it was building up into a cancerous mass <laughs> inside of my uterus. If anything, if, let me just say as a disclaimer, if you think anything at all is amiss, please go to a doctor. Please see a doctor. Please anything see a gynecologist. I know it might be scary. Take a friend you trust. If you tell them, this is a friend I trust, I want them in this room with me, they will let that person be in that room. They let my mother go with me for my intravaginal ultrasound. They asked if I want a nurse. I said, no, I have my mother here. And there's also other serious problems like endometriosis, I believe is endometriosis one. Endometriosis is it's, another one. Where the lining actually grows on the outside of your uterus, and that can be It can cause very internal painful. bleeding. That can be dangerous. It can cause severe pain. It. I had days where I was vomiting and unable to move. When I was in high school, the nurse would always have the heating pad on standby. She knew when my cycle would show up, and she would have the heating pad on standby for me. So during lunch, I could come in and curl up around the heating pad. My mom would come get me. I got it got so bad one time, and it came so suddenly. I soaked through my pants. The nurse just let me stay in there until my mom came to get me. And the nurse said, "Darling, take her home." You know, these are things no one talks about. And there's also, besides pads and tampons, there's a lot of other things you can use to help with your menstruation. You can use a diva cup, Ooh, just especially in recent years too. Yeah, oh, in yeah. recent years especially, you can use a diva cup. You can use what are called period panties. Um, they make them. Uh, Sophia from uh, BuzzFeed, who now has her own YouTube channel, just did a review a while back on period panties and really liked them. Um, also, you can use a reusable cloth pad. Um, they're made usually of a, a bamboo-based fabric, and they're more body-friendly and body-safe than uh, you know traditional pads. A lot of pads are bleached cotton, and unfortunately, they don't get all the traces of bleach out and that's why wearing them for extended amounts of time can be dangerous for the body. I will say, um, I don't know if you guys have this problem, um, I will say though since I started getting regular periods, I'm one of those assholes who have it for three days. Ugh. But um, I don't uh, menstruate. But um, I hate you both. <laughs> I will say one of the problems can be is um, the, I've had before with the work, because I bleed heavily for three days and I'm done. Um, 
I get those like huge overnight pads. Oh, oh yeah, I used to wear those. I go diapers. Through, I yeah. go through them like I go through a pack within like one period, Yay. like an eighteen twenty. So that was me back in high school. But, but my flow and everything has gotten way. Well, better. also if but I, I feel the pain now, yeah, I didn't feel the but, pain um, in high school. Well, I felt like menstruated. Those things will. Uh, and I recommend you do change it. Like a severe hit to my dysphoria. Yeah. I will say I do recommend. That you do change it like every four or five hours if you can because if you have a that heavy will flow. shed that will shed like crazy yeah if you have a heavy flow and I don't know if always has like cut back on like the quality but like I have the problem where the like I'll peel it off to wrap it mm -hmm. and like I I have to like start peeling off with a little bit of the tape because the tape gets stuck yeah the one I will recommend the brand that I use uh, is Kotex because they've switched to a bamboo based foam. Oh, and it is so much better. Yeah, it's more absorbent and it's more body safe. It, it, I definitely recommend <coughs> it, but I, I know everybody's gonna be like, whoa, TMI. I am one of the users of like the menstrual cup, and whatever. yeah. I've used, and she did not want I've to used reusable cloth pads and I liked them. It's a I like trial and error kind of thing. I like the cup because I can wear it for up to 12 hours and then just. It's body safe, medical grade silicone. And, uh, but it is a lot of trial and error. Yeah, you have it's, to adjust to it. Um, one of the reasons I would suggest period panties is if you don't like the feeling of feeling like you're wearing a diaper or if you are trans, if you're a trans guy and you don't want to be wearing that pad or that tampon and you feel uncomfortable, a lot of the reason I chose the Nexplanon implant for uh, my form of birth control is because I'm non-binary and menstruating was dysphoric for me. Oh yeah, and I've thought about that after though. <laughs> So one final thing I want to talk about that they don't Come usually on. cover in sex ed is actually uh, LGBT because uh, in the who in this room is LGBT? Say I. I. <laughs> that was just a straight, no, straight I in the room. Um, so for instance, um, no trades allowed. Her and I actually went to the same high school, so yes. we know what it's like. And I knew Catalina before her transition mm -hmm. and stuff. She's still the sweetest person ever. Oh, um, before we, I mean, it's kind of like a transition between the two topics, but just for the record, anyone who has an estrus cycle will have a period whether or not they can menstruate. Yeah. So I personally get, um, I get floating, indigestion, uh, cramps. Do you get period poops? Yeah. I freaking oh, hate so period so poops. poops. I don't um, even menstruate anymore and I still get the period and poops. And you sometimes think, and like if something bigs, like a stressful event's happening, you confuse them for the nervous poops, and then like three hours later, you're getting the nervous poops. So, <laughs> like, like so. this is how free we are with each other. Th this is what this is what you know, D fab people do. We talk about period poop, but also anyone with an extra cycle will probably tell you about period poop. But so, um, oh yes. yeah, but yeah, um, yes, period poop. <laughs> I've never had a problem with that. To be honest. Can, can help. Fight I, me! I didn't say anything. <laughs> I've never had a problem with it either. Well, fight me! <laughs> it's, it's just, not. it's never been an issue for me. I'm so, so like, sorry, one of the posts for menstrual things, it, it's a suggestion for trans specifically, it, the boxers that have a pocket for sanitary products plus a bulge. Oh. And I was trying to pull up the link to the actual Yeah, those product. exist, but yeah. also like the period panties are great because then a lot of, well because my fiance is trans masculine and hates wearing a pad because it makes them feel weird and um and also you know that's just a thing and it's like a lot of my trans guy friends are like no i don't want to wear a pad it makes me feel weird it makes me feel like but it's an alternative for those who don't want to wear like panties or anything well like that they don't look well. like panties they look like briefs um going back to the topic LG that's true. LGBT, yeah, they don't teach it in uh, the county we grew up in. We, I think we're, we were in the same county. Yeah. I went to high school with Kat. Like, you're in, you're in you went to Stafford County High School, so. I went yeah. to Spalter County. Let's talk about the games they had us play in sex. Oh my god. Favorite. All of them were male and female partners. Like My favorite the was the one where they made us um, take uh, with coins. They were like plastic, like bingo chips. I kind of just blocked out all of sex ed. And we had to like hand them out to people, but we could we only had so many to hand out. And they didn't tell us what it was, but I caught on pretty fucking quick that this was as many times as you could have sex before you didn't have any. And therefore, whoever had the most coins at the end had the most points. 
Right. I kind of think that um, the way they do these games is kind of like to lower your self worth. Yeah, Honestly, it's one of the it things. Is. One thing. Oh, sorry. Story time. And sorry. yeah, and the idea was that, like, the basic, the the moral of the game was, well, if you have sex with tons of people, then you don't have any worth because you don't have any points. And I'm like, well, guess what? I grew up to be a sex worker, motherfuckers. <laughs> Okay, back to Charlie. Sorry. Right. Yeah, and um, <laughs> so it kind of brings down your self worth, and that was one of the reasons why I kind of just blocked it out. That and also driver's ed cut into sex ed, so I was excused from it. But um, it was just like the way they teach uh, LGBT is we don't talk about it. Yeah, it's it's um, so LGBT. The LGBT, secret secret, gotta keep it. Being. By like myself, and I think I'm pan, pan. By I'm queer, queer and non-binary. Trans and pansexual. Yeah, I'm queer and non-binary. And the thing is, like teaching that, like teaching that doesn't exist. It it, it made me like think for the longest time that it's that you just didn't talk about it. Well, and stuff. Yeah, well like, good luck finding any information related to health classes of any sort, and it, even on a college. I'll start to cut you off on. Having multiple partners at the same time. Yeah, yeah. which well, I have. As I, well, I don't currently, but my girlfriend and I are open to the idea of having yeah. up to two or three. Partners. I have two partners. I have my fiance, who is trans masculine and super great, and I love them. And my other partner, Jean, who's non who's non binary like me. We're all defab, but you know what? A lot of people don't realize you need to get STD tested oh, frequently. Yeah. One frequently. of the things I do with Jean whenever they come to visit me is we just go do it just to be safe. Oh yeah, and I um, would say back to, sorry, the LGBT thing with the my partner, schools. But yeah, like my partner is gray ace and we still get tested because you can get STDs other ways than sex, kids. Oh yeah. yeah. But it made me lower my own self-worth. Like I did not think that what I was feeling was the correct feeling and I struggled mm -hmm. to fight those feelings, I guess. Like it was one of those things that Oh, I'm thinking this, but nobody else seems to be thinking it, so I guess it's wrong. And right. and then so it took me so long to come around and embrace what I like and who I am to the point now where I don't let anybody talk shit about it. Like I grew up with parents who talked about that. Thank God. Yeah, yeah but I was I, lucky to have yeah, the same thing. My too. my mom said just <laughs> my mom, God love her, Mama Potts. Um, she to, she told me I can date whoever I want. So you need a good knife. You take off the end. Look at the lube all over the fucking table. Yeah, whatever. And then you're going to make a little rip. And then do not use this for sex afterwards. Yeah, please don't use this for sex afterwards. Bad idea. We'll do it. Perhaps you will get pregnant or die. <laughs> don't die. No, first you'll get pregnant then you'll die. He'll die giving childbirth because this is obviously the 15th century. Yeah, you know, you're gonna you're gonna want to edit this small video. Just saying. That's fine. I can. I'm slow and I'm also using a knife because I didn't think to bring scissors today. I had scissors in my car if you had needed them. Fucking! I told you I was gonna do this. I thought you brought scissors, okay? Why would I bring scissors? Because <laughs> you were gonna do this. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> just easy super saying. Easy, easy logic. I'll put some things at uh, two or three speeds that way. Do you want to edit? You can edit this part. Yeah. And then Tori will have been an editor. Smiling. <laughs> Fucking fun. Yeah, go ahead. I have a uh, post okay. that I can also link you. It's the hard life of being a hoe. And it's basically tips about how to take care of yourself, but it's done in I'm totally a hoe and I love it fashion. So, and you're going to get, <laughs> you're gonna get a rectangle like this. So can I can you put your hand like this for me? So imagine this is the vaginal opening going this way. Yes, it's gonna touch your hand. You will place it like that. That's how I don't like I don't like touching Just wait till your grandparents are dead before before you like introduce because, to let me guess, because the the person's not Korean. No. Oh no, it's more no, it's because because Charlie's family's Korean. If I bring home, if I were to like bring home a girl and say, "Hey, this is my girlfriend," I, I'm currently not in a relationship, by the way. Um, no. H Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> She's single. No, I, I identify as bisexual, but I'm hetero romantic. That's how I identify. 
Um, there is a difference. Um, but if I were to bring home a girl, I, I, a, I, I joke around saying it will kill my grandmother. Oh yeah, I was really nervous. I had, before my current relationship, I had a girlfriend. And that was my first same-sex partner. And I was really nervous to tell my grandmother. And I actually, I remember still the moment when I told her that I had a girlfriend because I hadn't officially come out to her yet either. So then I was like, well, she happened to notice that we spent a lot of time together. We were driving, driving on the road at night. And I told her, okay, well, she happens to be my girlfriend. And I was really scared. I wanted to cry. <laughs> but she will be. She was really accepting. And I was just so grateful. I think that uh, the only person in my family who would ever be accepting like about it that's like not my parents or my sister. Because my sister knows I'm bi. Um, and she's like, okay, cool. Can we go get me some breakfast? Because <laughs> I was picking her up from school one day. And um, so... I know, definitely know that the one person who probably would never judge me throughout it if I were to bring home a girl would be my Aunt Penny because she married uh, her mutual attraction same-sex partner. Not right. to be confused with her, not to be confused with a lesbian. Right, okay. I'm, I'm like, that literally describes a lesbian because my aunt married okay. a lovely woman. Okay, Aunt Penny. <laughs> but it's just one of those those things and it's, it's scary but they don't teach a lot they don't teach you how to deal with those things yeah. at all no, in school. and when you're like fit 14 15 16 even everything and else is terrifying as well or it's and the heavy pressure yeah. from when you're like outside elements. between the ages of 13 to like 17 we're our most vulnerable so the fact that they don't even go into stuff like that and we have to find out on our own is the most terrifying thing that personally i i was terrified to like know about this stuff because the teacher wouldn't talk to you about it if you decided to ask them about something like that. And almost nothing on long distance relationships either, which was really rough for myself and my girlfriend when we were dating at the time. But we were together for a long time. We had Skype dates and things like that, and we would always be talking to each other. Yeah. Well, but it's very difficult to deal with feelings-wise, especially when it's your first relationship. Yeah. yeah. And also, not teaching young people about the reality of sex and the reality of contraception and their bodies and gender and sexuality, it can cause a lot of problems because that's how young people end up in abusive relationships, especially with someone who's older because you perceive them as wiser and more knowledgeable and why would they lie to you if they love you? And that's how my first girlfriend abused me for almost <coughs> two years and sexually abused me while I was a minor. Right, and for for me, I can say, um, because it was, can I give you a hug? Yeah. Goodbye, we're losing our, we're losing our worker. The tiniest bean must leave. I'm the shortest person in this room, yeah. damn it. I'm like the second tallest next to her. I'd hug you, but I don't want to use it. I don't care. Scooch, Let me die. My chair's stuck. Scooch, um, it's not dying I'm concerned about. Let me die. It's the suffering beforehand. <laughs> I don't care about I'm that. always suffering. Right. What's the difference? So, yes. um... Fair point. Just ignore me in the One more... One final thing we should talk about, and... Well, we're gonna, like, summarize what we discussed after it. Don't and, like, our... talk about the abstinence games, though. I have some rage. We'll talk about this. We'll talk about it towards just, the end. At some point. Um, Planned Parenthood is one more thing I want to talk about. Um, I personally am for Planned Parenthood. Only for those who don't know, only three percent of their um, funding, which is all like private funding, none of the government funding goes to it, is only abortions. The rest is to help people like her, people like her, people like me, uh, receive health care, female health care. Um, if we had like very little insurance, same or if you're a single mother, or if you're or, sing or, or if you're trans and can't come out to your parents, yeah, or if like I've even like see, I've even heard stories about people who were raped go in to get counseling. Mm -hmm. It's it's a place where women go to seek medical and emotional counseling for those types of issues because. Sorry, I suddenly stepped she, on She top like top. raised her hands and everything. It was like, would you like to Jesus? move closer? No, it was just it was a moment of oh, there's something that we need to talk about. You don't have to show your face, but would you like yeah, to move closer? Um, I am also personally for Planned Parenthood. Um, I know a story that 
one the person that I'm close to, she could not physically have a child. It was just not happening. And so she had to walk to Planned Parenthood to get an abortion. She didn't really want to. And people were, you know, outside of Planned Parenthood writing, shouting, whatever. And they were shouting at her. And I'm, and I'm counseling her right now, telling her, you know, it's not your fault that you can't have children. It's, don't, they're like calling her murderer and all those, you know, stupid things. And it's, she just couldn't physically carry or bear a child. Um, this is actually a very sensitive topic so I don't talk about it with my friend who does stuff for 40 days of life mm -hmm. so but you can still res I, I feel like what people don't understand though is that you can still be friends with people who are pro-life and oh yeah and they'll be there for you oh yeah like I've seen people who had to get procedures and um, even after they got the procedure done their pro-life friends were there for them oh yeah I personally am pro-choice. I, I will pro always choice. be pro-choice. Yeah, I'm pro, if you don't want to get one, don't get one, and I'll still be there for you. If you want to get one, I'm pro, you there should have the option for yeah. a safe and healthy because manner if, of getting whatever it is because, you need to have. Done. And this is like kind of like me campaigning here to keep Planned Parenthood open. Um, if you close Planned Parenthood like for good, then there's going to be a rise in death among teenage women if they're trying to or young or single young women, women yeah. because they're going to get it illegally <coughs> and coat hanger abortions, I'm sorry if that's like not the proper term, but a dirty abortion leads to sep septicemia. Mm -hmm. it, it leads oh, to yeah. internal scarring. It can emotionally damage the woman and it can lead to death. It can lead to, to the most incurable disease, death. My great grandmother, she, could, she lived in um, Hungary she could not have a child like not that she could not like she could physically but it was something about the social status i don't keep track of stuff over there because it's confusing and i tried uh, <laughs> but tried. i tried i tried for her sake to keep track of it all and i couldn't mm -hmm. i don't know how she did it but she couldn't have a child because she wasn't married to this man or whatever and she went into a bathtub with scalding hot water and burned herself and gave herself an abortion she got really really sick and almost died there are people who will actually almost OD on nutmeg because nutmeg is, I believe it's nutmeg, is actually uh, something that can cause uh, miscarriages. Oh yeah. Well, and, and in, it can um, be very dangerous to do that. A the Victorian-ish era, there would be things like pennyroyal and stuff, which, by the way, if you overdose on that, which is very easy to do, causes bleeding out of literally every orifice. Right. You will bleed from everywhere and it's, if you overdose on pennyroyal and similar things. Yeah, but it causes abortions. So I mean, those types of things. Like, I understood why we needed them, but think about the mortality rate. Also, like keeping Planned Parenthood open. I'm gonna people be, care more honestly about the morality rate rate than the mortality rate. Yeah, make that a shirt. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but like my mom, when she was gonna have my sister, it came down to my mom or my sister. One of them was gonna die, and if she hadn't gone to Planned Parenthood. I don't know if I would have a mom or a sister. They could have both died. But thankfully, because of something like that exists, I have both, and we're all happy and healthy. And it's amazing. Why would you fund, defund something like that for over something as small as 3% of, of private funding? Private funding. And it's more or less, I, I think that the way people do it, they could do it. I believe the pro-lifers have their right they have the right to oh, say yeah. this is wrong and I'm all for like having your rights and stuff. But they could be forcing your morals upon someone else yeah. is non consent. <laughs> yes. But I also feel like they could do it a little bit gentler. They could mm -hmm. like not be assholes about it. They they could stop screaming at women because they don't know that woman's story. No. Like it goes back That to woman could just be going there for a mammogram or something. And it goes back to um, for the story about my friend that I told that she couldn't physically have a child and they were yeah. yelling at her for oh, murder that baby has a life or blah 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 it's yeah. like it's not that she wants to it's that she physically can't it uh, would another, kill her to do so another thing um, there are cases where the fetus dies yeah. but it's not a miscarriage so it actually can end up killing the mother um I want to say it like becomes essentially necrosis, yeah, yeah, and spreads throughout the entire body, and then and the woman kills the woman. Um, so there are actually 
a good portion of the abortions that happen, especially of ones that are late term, um, that's that's what they are. Right. They are your stories. So, before, this is actually still talking about abortion and stuff. It's perfectly normal for for people to feel some kind of depression or anxiety right around the time it is of uh, giving birth or after giving birth. And, but things like postpartum depression can be very serious and if you if it lasts more than the two weeks, you should go and get that checked out. Yeah, there's cases. just something to say because if you don't then it will lead to negligence and you or the child could die. Yeah, there's been cases I think there's a case in the nineties or eighties or nineties where a woman drowned all three of her children because of of postpartum depression and I think that might have been the wake-up call that a lot of like mental health professionals needed to like start treating it seriously yeah because for the longest time I don't even think it was treated seriously for the longest time it was just oh was, you're overreacting it was considered like a um, it was basically just a taboo like, mm -hmm. Oh, you should you should be happy you made a kid. It it's also perfectly time. normal to not want children. I don't I, want children. I don't, I don't, want don't need to deal with that. There's enough children in the world. I'll be yeah. aunt to somebody else's kids and shake them up with sugar and then return them in a couple hours. It's <laughs> fine. Mom, that's it's, gonna be my mom when my aunt has children. <laughs> Just like it's also perfectly normal for people who under normal circumstances couldn't have children to want children. Mm. Really, I personally want to carry a child and the medical technology isn't there yet. So I personally I don't want children till till I'm a little bit older. Like I'll wait till I'm thirty two or something. Um I will say, speaking of excuses that older people give us younger women, um uh, the one that I heard the most of uh, is when you meet someone special you'll change your mind. Yeah. No. Bullshit. <laughs> I have not yeah, changed my know. mind, and I am extremely happy of my current relationship. So male, female, trans, non-binary, <laughs> etc. Anybody, any identity. You don't need someone else to be complete. Nope. You do not need to have children for nope. either side of it to be complete. You are your own person. It's normal to want it. It's normal to not want it. And that goes also, the whole video we just did was about sex. This shout out right here. It is valid if you do not feel these feelings at all. If yeah. you do not want to participate in sex at all, that is also valid. Yeah. But we wanted to get it across to make sure that people are educated about it. That way, if you're the hoe, hoe responsibly. Because <laughs> no one understands. Now you're abstinence game stories. Okay. Yes. So, abstinence only teaching is what is the norm in public schools in America. I don't know if we have viewers that are not in America or whatever or what the rules are outside Canada. of the country. The one Canada didn't viewer. Canada didn't. Canada. Canada. Um, oh, Canada. Um, anyway. <laughs> we all I don't know where that came from. Anyway. So they will give games and if you pay attention then you notice very quickly that they are specifically games to trick you into feeling shitty afterwards mm -hmm. but, but if you don't general. pay attention then you go through with the game because you're supposed to follow instructions in class or you don't get credit mm -hmm. and grades are very important in this country and the grading system is weird but that's another rant for another day anyway so and this semester, some, right <laughs> some things such as a game i believe my brother did this one where every person in the class had a die to roll one to six regular die and Certain numbers gave you certain diseases, like STDs or whatever, and certain things said you got pregnant. They had everyone roll those dice <laughs> until 98% of the class had been pregnant, including men, by the Where's way. Where's the baby gig? <laughs> and everyone had died. Multiple people had lost the baby at some point or another because Same they were not sexing responsibly. <laughs> that was the point of the game. But they didn't say hey, here's what this means. It just said, hey, roll this die a bunch of times and write down the numbers, and then I'll tell you what those numbers mean after the game. That's you got pregnant, how sex works. That's not how sex works. You got especially, pregnant, you got AIDS, and you die. <laughs> especially if you have sex safely, or yeah. if you educate yourself or your partner. By the way, it's important to talk to your partner about having had previous partners. Yes. yes. That's a very, very important also, thing. Also, um, don't lie. If you're going to do this, 
don't fluid bond unless you've like done STD testing, please don't. Another, Otherwise, everyone's gonna get everything. Another thing yeah. is, oh, please also talk to your partner about preferences. Just like have sit sit down before. Mm -hmm. Make sure talk. there's no squicks or anything like that. Yeah. Make sure that if you have something that you really want to do that they're okay with it and if they're not, figure out what they are what? okay with. It's a t Find it's, common ground. It's a if you just sit down, you talk about past partners, you talk about preferences, you talk about protection, you want to make sure that you both are on the same page because if you're not, things can turn ugly quickly. And mm -hmm. I feel like... Especially if you wait until you're in the middle of sex and then we'll find out. Someone finds out, oh shit. I can't do this and you know and if here's the problem that I had to get over rather quickly as well if you are not into something or you cannot do something speak it please please yeah. speak it please say it I, if you don't I am know not into you're this. not into something because you didn't know it was a thing when you find out it's a thing let them know say you know hey I've never done this before it it might be a hit or miss with me but you pl please speak it. It's mm -hmm. not embarrassing. It's you're not depriving them of something. Yeah. Unless, it's, unless you talk about it first, no surprises in the bedroom either. Yeah. No surprise so, cakes. No suddenly, hey, I'm gonna be doing this thing to you. Hopefully that's okay. No. So no talk about, talk it, about first. it first. Story. <laughs> Story time about that. Or set um, parameters for the kinds of surprises that are allowed in the bedroom. If you like surprises. Yeah. So, surprise, I have no fit. <laughs> 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 it's like a Ken doll. <laughs> <laughs> or in my case, surprise, I have one. So, um, but it's now, not like a Ken doll. Uh, <laughs> you love me. So, for example, my girlfriend, she's also trans, she's on HRT, and that makes you really ten temperature sensitive. It would not be a good idea for me to surprise her with ice as a sensation. Or wax, I just say. Wax, one of those things. She's, she's, she said okay to wax, but like, I like ice and she doesn't. And had I like not asked her beforehand and surprised her with it, that would have been a bad time. Because <laughs> she yeah. probably would have like freaked out. She probably would have clapped you. <laughs> she's <laughs> done before on accident. <laughs> Just go for right here. <laughs> go, go for the jugular! jugular. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. This episode brought to you by almost steel yogurt. <laughs> 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 he's, probably, he's probably horrified, by the way. I didn't tell him today's topic. <laughs> Does he watch these? Surprise! Occasionally. Yeah. My boyfriend, Richie. Just surprise. <laughs> you should send me the link so I can show it to my girlfriend. <laughs> Oh my god. I, I don't know if he knew that we were doing this at all, which is fine. I never told yeah. him. I, I, don't I don't know if I told him or not, so. I don't know if he watched the episode. I didn't know this was happening, so I'm just kind of here. Sheesh. So, but Sheesh. here's a, an, another abstinence game that I, I need to share because this travesty so needs to stop in public schools. So this was when they had done the gender separated, which oh, is so a bad. stupid thing anyway. That's stupid. So I signed up for a game. You know, game, cool, we don't have to sit here and look at these disgusting pictures anymore. Fun. They gave us each a little paper cup of water, what looks like water. I'm gonna, I have to specify what looks like water. They didn't tell us, so first of all, problems here. They didn't tell us not to drink it. They didn't tell us what was gonna be going on until they had everybody have cups and everything. And then they gave us the instructions and say, you have to follow the instructions or you will not get credit for today. So. That should, these are all warning signs in hindsight, but we, were, we didn't care. We weren't paying attention that mm -hmm. closely. Anyway, Zero fuck so given. the rules of this game were pick some people, share your cup of water with them. So pour a cup of water into one cup, swirl around, pour some back into the original cup, so on and so forth. Do it with as many people as you want. You have to do it with at least three people. These are the rules of the game. I was extraordinarily I'm already, pissed when we get off I'm already when we got to the end. One girl ignored all of that and was hiding in the bleachers, because we were in the auditorium. Or not the bleachers, the seats. She was hiding behind one of the seats, crouched down on the ground. 
And the only reason I know this is because I remember her standing up after they said, okay, stop sharing your water. And she stood up from behind the seat and, and stood, stayed aside from the rest of us when they had the rest of us line up. Now, this is the part on looks like water because apparently there was a chemical in some of them and if you put another chemical in it, it turns the water pink. So that's usually not something that you want teenagers drinking. If you give us drinks, we are likely to drink it, even if it's just water, because, hey, I have water now. Because so luckily, no one drank from the Yeah, because then Stafford County could have had a lawsuit on their hands. Yeah. So, and then they go and they do the dropper of, of whatever the chemical, I don't remember the chemical names, unfortunately. I remember it turned it pink. And they did that dropper in everyone's cup. And then they got to the girl who was standing on her own. And they said, why aren't you with the rest of the girls? Oh, I've played this game before. She didn't tell anybody that this was an abstinence-only game. She didn't tell anybody you don't actually have to follow the rules. And she didn't tell anybody that if you don't follow the rules, you can still get credit because you're smarter than the teacher is letting you think you are. She didn't let anyone know. She hid away, and she looked all smug and everything while the rest of us are glaring at this girl, really pissed off that we had to do this stupid, another abstinence-only game, because otherwise you're going to get pregnant or get an STD or both and die. Locker room must have been fun for her. None of us liked her. None of us liked her. Nobody talked to her for the rest of the year. It was not pleasant. Yeah, I know. You've told me this story a couple times. Yeah, it still uh, it makes just, me upset hearing it, because I think that's bullshit the way the... Uh, yeah. And that's not the only thing that I can actively remember from sex ed anymore. And it's because I was so angry with her for not telling the rest of us that it was a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, Miss yeah, mm -hmm. Cook was just like, yeah, I'm not going to give you guys credit if you don't sign this, because they, they need this many signatures for it. Yeah, I wanted to opt out, because I knew my parents could give me a better sex ed... Thing, and we had books at home and stuff, and I could just search things online. I see. Had I known, but I my could... parents wouldn't let me opt out. Honestly, yeah, my parents wouldn't let me opt out either. Honestly, had I known I that I could have opt out for non-religious reasons as well, I probably would have hindered my parents to let me opt out, and then I could just play Foursquare for the rest of the yeah. time. Yeah. Well, and we yeah, could have. It could have been we stay software. in the gym, or you Did got you to go. Yes. Remember? Oh yeah, my sophomore year. I was banana banana. banana, banana. In, in middle school, I remember that if we didn't, if we got to opt out of uh, health slash sex ed, then we were allowed to go and stay in the gym during gym class, or we were allowed a special pass to go to the library. And everyone just I wanted to go to the library so I could up. read things and actually enjoy some time at school. Seventh grade and eighth grade were really, really bad years. It's not, not fun, not cool. That's when you anyway. entered this county, wasn't it? <sighs> Yes, that's when I went back into public school. Halfway through the middle school. Yeah. We don't recommend... If you're able to, we recommend, like... Skip. Skip. Skip sex ed and just watch a lot of videos. Also, porn is not real, children. Yeah, porn is not real. Um, we will... I'm going My to... My expectations were, were so... Weird? Weird. Weird yeah. is a good word because of porn. Which I never really, just a little FYI, I never actually really watch porn. Like, I'll watch it because I'm curious, and then, huh, that's a thing. Okay. So we're going to end up this note. Um, we're going to leave a link below for uh, Pornhub's uh, sex ed uh, website, which is wonderful and filled with oh, yeah. great uh, content and stuff. Um, we don't recommend, if you're under the age of 18, going on to actual Pornhub, because that'd be illegal. Um, it is? Yep, it's illegal to look at porn if you're on the edge of the No one told me that. Good ass rules, isn't it? I didn't even know about porn <laughs> until after I was 18, but um, still. But yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's one of those laws where like <coughs> you only can get in trouble if you actually get caught while you're on the age of 18. So I can say this now, but no one told me that. No, I was like yeah, 18. But we. So we legally can't say go to Pornhub. So don't go to Pornhub if you're under the age of 18. Um, but we recommend their uh, sex education site. We will leave links below to all these wonderful videos and websites and stuff that educate us. 
Um, thank you for watching, and I hope you guys enjoy the thumbnail, because I'm going to, like, tell them what the thumbnail is now. Um, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.